Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to go over section 6.1, day one notes. So as I go through these notes, you should be filling them out on the paper that you got from um, the teacher yesterday. So here we go. Um, again, these are notes, so they will not be turned into me. These are yours to keep. Today, we're going to be discussing exponential growth and decay. So an exponential function is a function where we notice that the variable of the problem is located um, in the exponent position. Okay, so what that will look like will be something like y equals a times b to the x. Sometimes they don't put the parenthesis there, so uh, just to show you, like sometimes, like if you look at number three down here, they just put the dot for multiplication. Um, other examples, like on number six, if you look on the back, you can see they don't put the dot and they just put the parentheses. So there's different ways that you can write it um, and it still means the, the same things. And sometimes we use both. Sometimes we use the dot and the parentheses. Okay. Um, there are two different types of exponential functions that we are going to be discussing. Okay. Um, the first type of function we will be discussing is an exponential growth function. The way that we can determine that it is growth is by looking at the base. So that will be represented by the letter B. So if the base is bigger than one, then this will be what we call an exponential growth function. And what that means is as my X values get bigger, my y values or the graph or the function itself is going to appear that it is increasing. So if you think about this um, on an x, y axis, what's going to happen as you go left to right is your graph is going to increase like this, okay? Just to give you an idea. If the base is something between zero and one, and sometimes they give it to you as a fraction, sometimes they give it to you as a decimal, you can see that on the back here, um, but it's a value between zero and one, and any time that happens, that means that you have what we call an exponential decay function. Now an exponential decay function, as, you, uh, as your X values get bigger, um, your, uh, your Y values are going to be decreasing. So again, on the graph, as you are going left to right, the way the graph is going to look is it's going to go start way up here and come down like that. Okay. So, um, all exponential functions have this sort of boundary line that we call um, an asymptote, okay? So this, this is a boundary line. That's, that's another word to explain what an asymptote is. I think of it as a boundary line for your graph, okay? Um, it is a line that your graph gets really close to, but it never, ever touches it, and it never, ever crosses it, okay? So the asymptote, by definition, is a line. The graph gets super close to, but never touches it. or crosses it, okay? So I think of it as the boundary line of the graph. Oftentimes it is um, drawn on your graph as a dashed line, okay? So we really wanna uh, pay attention to that. Um, so one thing that we wanna be able to do is recognize what type of function we have just by looking at the equation. That can tell us a couple different things like what the graph is going to look like. Uh, later on, this will tell us um, what kind of values we should get, what type of formula we should use. So in these first three examples, they're just wanting you to identify the base and determine whether it is growth or decay. So take a moment and pause this video and write down whether you think these would be growth or decay. 
All right. So um, if you looked at number one, you would have noticed that your base is one fourth. So for one fourth, that is definitely between zero and one. So this would be um, what we would call exponential decay because the base is between zero and one. On uh, number two, your base is 7 over 2. Um, notice that that is a fraction, but remember that 7 over 2 is equal to 3.5. So that means that it is not between 0 and 1. Just because it's a fraction does not, between, does not mean it's decay. So make sure you understand the value of it. That is bigger than 1, so then this one you should have picked growth. And then finally, on number three, this one, you can see the base is five, okay? And the base is what determines growth or decay. Five is bigger than one, so then this would also be a growth function. What we're going to be doing um, today, one of the things, is graphing these functions. It's going to be pretty easy to graph. You will want a calculator to help you um, get your values more quickly. For each of these problems, we are going to create a set, um, a table of values to come up with a set of points that we will graph, okay? Now, for each of these problems that um, we do, what we're going to use as our x values is what I like to call the fab five, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. This is also the values that you will be using um, in your worksheet that you will be working on in class. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to be plugging these values in. Um, you can represent your values as fractions, but I would highly recommend that if it's a fraction value to write your answer as a decimal so you get a really clear idea um, as to where exactly this point is on the graph. Okay. So again, you're just going to use your calculator for this. So we're going to go ahead and plug in a negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 into the calculator. So take a moment and work through those. Pause the video and you can fill that out. Okay, so hopefully for this you would have gotten 0 0.25. This would have been 0 0.5, plugging in 0, that's easy, you can do that one in your head. 2 to the 0 power is 1, anything to 0 power is 1. 2 to the 1st would be 2, 2 squared would have given you 4. So some of these you would, wouldn't need a calculator for necessarily, um, but you can do some of them in your head, some of them you don't have to. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph these points and see what we come up with. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and graph, let's see, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 0, 1, um, negative 1, 0. 0.5, negative 2, 0. 0.25, um, and do your best to estimate where that's at. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead, we're going to connect these. Okay, now... Pay really close attention to this. For this problem here, okay, our asymptote is going to be y equals zero. Y equals zero is a horizontal line, so it's going to look like this. I'll do it in green. This is y equals zero right here. You can see it here in the green, right? So that right there is my asymptote, that's y equals zero. For all of our problems today, the asymptote will be y equals zero. It's not always y equals zero, but for the purpose of these problems, it will be because we won't have any transformations being applied to um, our problems. Okay, meaning it's not gonna shift up or down. So now, so the reason why that's important is because when you go to connect these points, Okay, um, up here it's pretty easy to see what's happening. So I'm just going to go from this point um, and I connect it. As it goes up, it never shoots straight up. It keeps going out to the right. Um, and in this direction, it's going to come down and it's never going to cross that asymptote. You can see it's going to kind of like glide right along it. And that's because those values here are going to get 
smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. But it's never ever going to get to zero. If you take two to a very high, say you did two to the negative 10th power in your calculator, I can guarantee you that you're not going to get a negative number. Like you're never going to have any Y values that are down here. So this, this graph is going to approach our asymptote. It's going to get really, really close to it, but it's never, ever going to touch it. So that's what your graph will look like. Like on this next example, it's also going to have an asymptote at Y equals zero. Okay. Um, meaning that you're going to have a graph that's going to get really, really close to this line, but it's never, ever going to touch it or cross it. Okay. All right. So your y-intercept should be easy to tell. First of all, you can see it on your graph. It's also in our table. The y-intercept is the point where your x is zero. I can see that that is this point right here. And my y-intercept is zero, one. The domain is how far the graph is going left and going right. It's gonna go left forever. And because as it goes up, it's also going to the right forever. That means your domain will be all real numbers. The range is the Y values. It will not be all real numbers because it doesn't go down forever. It actually stops right here where Y is zero. So what that means is that all my Y values are gonna be bigger than zero. For that, we use the inequality symbol greater than, and we say y greater than zero. It is not equals to, okay? This is not equal to zero, okay? It's, it's not ever going to touch zero, so we cannot include zero. So it's not going to be an equal to type of problem. It's just greater than. Um, two ways to notice that it is growth. As it goes to the right, my graph gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The other way to notice that it's growth from the very beginning of the problem, I see the base is bigger than one. So that tells me that this is a growth function. Okay. So we can go ahead and look at um, number five as well um, and, and see what this type of problem looks like. I can see automatically my base is one fourth. That's a value between zero and one. So that tells me that it is going to be a decay type of problem, which means as the graph goes left to right, my um, graph is going to kind of come down like this. Okay. Again, I'm using the fab five um, for my uh, table. So take a moment and plug these values in. Remember that in the calculator, one fourth is 0 0.25. So you could rewrite your function as um, 0 0.25 if you wanted to, it really doesn't matter. So take, pause the video and, and go ahead and fill in your table of values and then also graph them. Okay. Uh, okay, so you should have gotten, um, for these problems here, you should have gotten um, 16, 4, 1, uh, 0 0.25 or 1 fourth, and 0 0.62, oh, point, I forgot a zero, 0 0.0625. It's kind of running into my graph there, but that's okay. So then um, you should have went ahead and graphed those. So here we have, um, neg I don't think my graph goes to 16. So I'm just not going to graph that one because it won't fit. So that's okay. Um, negative one, four will fit. Zero, one will fit. Um, one, and then a 0.25, and then two, and a very teeny tiny number, right? It's going to look something like that. Okay, so um, if we go ahead and connect that, remember that over here, whoops, over here, um, it's going to come down and it's going to get really, really close to that asymptote as it goes to the right, but it's never going to touch it. Do your best to graph that. And over here, imagine this is going to have a 216. So that's like way up here somewhere. This graph is going to go up. And as it goes up, it's going to veer to the left. Uh, and again, do your best to, to graph that. This is probably not perfect by any means. And I don't know why that just deleted. So there you go. Something like that. 
Okay, so you can then go ahead and state your uh, domain, your range, and your y-intercept. Um, again, the domain, because it's going left and right forever, is all real numbers. The range, it's never going to go below zero. And this problem, I can see that from my graph, will be y greater than zero. And my y-intercept is always the point where x is zero. Luckily, that's always in our table. And I can also see it on my graph is 0, 1. Okay. All right. So we have another example down here. Okay. That you are going to um, take a shot at. Um, what I want to mention on this one before you go ahead and do it is um, that you're going to use the Fab 5 as your table. Okay. And you need to make sure that with this problem that you do your base to a power first and then times that by negative two. So just be really careful with that. So we can go ahead and we can um, pause the video and give that one a try. Okay, so take a moment and check your answers here um, in the table. Uh, I usually stop at three decimal places. If you stopped at two, it's totally fine. Um, you can see here, this graph looks a little bit weird. I know it's underneath the x-axis, but that's because of this negative right here. This um, flips it over the x-axis, okay? And that's what causes it to be um, down here as opposed to up here. Okay, it is decay, and then you can check your answers over here. Pay close attention to the range. Notice it's less than zero, not greater than zero. The y-intercept is over here in your table. Okay, so there is that. And you'll get more practice with this in your um, assignment that you're going to get after this video. All right, let's move on to... Um, other exponential growth and decay applications here, okay? Um, again, remembering that with exponential growth, we know that the base is always going to be greater than 1, and then for exponential decay, the base will be between 0 and 1, okay? Um, exponential growth, remember, um, occurs when... Um, you have an increase, okay? So it's when the function increases or grows bigger. So it increases um, by the same factor over equal sets of time or intervals of time where exponential decay is when that function is going to do the opposite of that. It's going to decrease. So over a certain period of time by the same factor over a certain period of time. So um, let's look at some real-world um, applications of this. For these problems, we have um, a formula. Some call it a model. It's another word for it. They can call it a formula or they can call it a model, depending on um, whether you have growth or decay. And you'll determine that by the words in the problem is going to depend on what formula you're going to use. Now, they look really, really similar. So that's one thing that is good. Um, I do not make you memorize the formulas, but you should definitely know which one to use for a given problem. So the formula for um, growth is going to be y equals a times parenthesis 1 plus r, close the parenthesis, to the power of t. Now, the only difference between the growth formula and the decay formula is going to be the parentheses. 
whoops it will look like that it'll have a one minus r instead of a one plus r okay and that's because uh this one is representing 100 percent of something so you're what you had previously and now you're adding something on top of what you had previously. So that's why it's adding. This is saying that I'm taking something away from what I had previously had. So that's what's making it get smaller. Now, what do all of these variables mean? I know there's lots of variables here. What do they all mean? Okay, so first of all, your A value here, this is gonna be what we call the initial amount. That is the same here. Okay, um, T is going to stand for time. Again, in both of these, it stands for time. Uh, the the R is going to be what we call the rate of the rate of growth. And for um, the decay, it will be called the rate of decay. Now, when they give you the rate of growth, or the rate of decay, it's often given to you as a percentage value. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that when we get to the problems. The Y value is going to be representing your final amount. So again, it's the same there. And then the last thing here is this entire parenthesis. Okay. The parenthesis is going to be your base. And they call the base your growth factor, your growth multiplier. That's what it there, it's multiplying by. Um, to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's your um, same factor that I talked about here, okay? That's the, the growth. Now for decay, they don't call it the growth factor, they call it the decay factor. But again, that's going to be your base, okay? So those are the formulas, that's what everything means. Um, and again, you will be given what's written in green, but all this that I wrote in blue, you're going to need to remember that. And as you go through the problems, you'll learn to remember what those things are very quickly. Okay, let's look down here at example seven. Um, in example seven, they give you this um, exponential function. You can see the variables in the exponent. Uh, first question they ask, is this growth or decay? And hopefully you're like, oh, I see the base is 0.85. That is definitely a value between zero and one. So this is definitely what we call a decay model or function. Okay. And that's because the base is less than one. Um, the next thing that they ask you for, they ask for what is the percent of decrease? Okay. I'm actually going to skip over that one, and I'm going to go to C. I think this one should have been first. It says, what is the decay factor? I had told you up here that the decay factor is the base itself. So my decay factor would be just the base. Okay, remember that the decay factor is the base itself, right? Now, the percent of decrease, let's go back to that. The percent of decrease, whoops, if I could do this correctly, that is your value of R. But if you notice in this problem, it is not written as 1 minus R or 1 plus R. So you don't really know what R is just from looking at the equation, okay? We know that our percent of decrease is only the R. And that is part of the base one minus R. So if 0 0.5, if 0 0.5 is our base and it is equal to one minus R, 
what does R have to be? Well, couldn't we just solve that for R? And here's where your calculators will come in handy. Go ahead and minus the one on each side. So do 0 0.85 minus one in your calculator. You should get negative 0 0.15. Again, minus one on each side. So 0 0.85 minus one in your calculator, you get negative 0 0.15. Um, and we still have a negative R. So what should we do? Well, we should divide by one. Dividing by one just changes the sign, so you get 0 0.15. Now, 0 0.15 is not a percent. That is a decimal value, just like 0.85 was not a percent. How do we change a decimal to a percent? Well, we times it by 100. So 0 0.15 times 100 will give me my percent of 15 percent. So that is the percent of decrease. It's decreasing by 15 percent as the x values grow bigger and bigger. Okay, so basically the um, r value is the difference between 1 and 0.85. That's what it is. Do you really need to go through um, all of this madness to get to it? No. Some people can see that, oh, I'll, all I need to do is do 1 minus 0.85. It's just the difference there, which is 0.15. Different ways to look at it. But what I do want you to realize is that this decimal value that they give you is not a percent. So make sure that you're changing your decimal value into a percent. And the reason for that is because we don't calculate with percents. When we plug a percent value into a formula, which you're going to see down below, we need to change that um, percent to a decimal, and I'll talk about that in example eight. Okay? All right. So in 2000, the population of a city was about 1.04 million. During the next 14 years, the population increased by about 2.05% each year. Write an exponential model given the po given giving the population in millions t years after 2000. Okay, okay. So let's take a look at what we're going to do with this. First of all, I want you to notice that this says increased. So we're going to increase means that it's growing, which means it's a growth function. So for this one, you're going to have to use y equals a times 1 plus r to the power of t. I'm just going to write that down there so we don't have to keep scrolling. So if they want you to write a model for t years, that means in your formula, you're going to plug in everything you know um, except for t and except for y. So it'll be something like y equals, and then you will plug in everything that you know except for t. Okay. So our initial value is right here. This is going to be your A. That's how much you started with. That's how many people you started with. You started with 1.04 million, okay? That stands for millions. And then from there, we have our parenthesis. Then we have a one. Then we have a plus sign. Next is R. R is your rate of growth in this case. They told us our rate of growth is 2.05%. But remember that that is a percent. We want the decimal value. A percent is just how much out of 100. So all you have to do is take that percent, divide it by 100, and it will give you your decimal. So do 2.05 divided by 100, and you should get the decimal value. And if you do that, you get 0 0.0205. Please do not round your decimal too much, because then your answer will be really off. Close the parenthesis, leave it as T. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to simplify this a little bit more. We can actually add those numbers in the parenthesis. So let's simplify that. 
um, to get 1.0205, do not round that, to the power of t. And what you'll see here is we have an exponential function with a base bigger than one because it's growth. And this would be a model that will allow us to find the number of people in millions to any number of years. We can plug anything in for t that we want to then get an estimate of that population at that time. So with that idea, it says estimate the city's population in 2008. So if I want to do that, what am I going to plug in? Well, for this, I'm going to plug in my T value of 8. Because after to th the difference between 2000 and 2008 would be 8 years. So T stands for number of years. So in 8 years, what will my population be? So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and you're going to plug in to your formula. There's not much work to show. This is literally all the work that you can show is what you're going to plug into the calculator. You must show this step. I need to see where your answer is coming from. Okay. And now all you have to do is put that into the calculator. Please make sure that when you do that, you do your base to the power first and then multiply to 1.04. So putting that into the calculator, you should have 1.22. I'll round it to two decimal places. Um, you, rounding it at the end of the problem is fine to do. Um, and we need to label this, right? This is number of people. Is there 1.22 people? No, there's 1.22 million people in our population. So the answer to this problem is 1.22 million. So you can go ahead and take a look at number nine, what I'll remind you of with the word depreciating. Depreciating means to go down. So for this one, before you get started on it, make sure you do um, decay. So go ahead and pause the video and try number nine on your own. Okay, so here you can see, you can check your answers with mine. This is the model. The model is the generic form where you leave Y as itself and T as T so that you could then plug values in for T or Y to find the other one. And for this, we see that uh, in the second part here, you're plugging in for T, you're plugging in 10. Um, please notice if you got something wrong um, that you made sure to change this percent to a decimal. So you had to do 12 over 100 to get the decimal of 0 0.12. The other thing to note is that this is decay. So that means that your base at this point in the problem in A should be smaller than 1. If it's not, you've done something wrong. Okay. And then again, making sure you're plugging things into the calculator. Don't just take my answers and make them yours. Make sure that you're putting them into your calculator and understanding how I'm getting this number. And if you're not, make sure you ask for help on that. So that is the lesson for today. Um, you can go back and watch this video anytime you need to. You can definitely rewind. Um, but uh, best of luck with your practice on this.